Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Rostar. The Inter-American Development Bank, or IDB, was established in 1959 and works to improve lives in Latin America and the Caribbean through financial and technical support for countries working to reduce poverty and inequality. Now, they recently hosted Unlocking Creativity for Development. I doubt we will get into that, but IDB's country rep for Trinidad and Tobago, Karina Coburn, she's taken some time from her schedule, dedicated to improving lives, to speak a bit to IDB's impact on development finance. Welcome, Ms. Coburn. Thank you so much for making the time. I know it's many times people hear IDB, IDB, IDB. So uh, uh, in terms of getting an idea of what the IDB is really about, can you give us some of the, those main aims from and take, actually taking from the country strategy? This is the one for 2021 to 2025. Thanks. Hi, DK. It's really great to be here and to have the opportunity to talk about our work with you. So you are correct, the country strategy 2021 to 2025 guides our work in Trinidad and Tobago. And you also mentioned earlier improving lives, which is the, the motto that guides our work across Latin America and the Caribbean. So the Inter-American Development Bank is the development institution focused on Latin America and the Caribbean. We have 48 member countries, 26 of those qualify for development support and assistance. And we have been here in Trinidad and Tobago for over 50 years already. So it's a well-established relationship and we're looking forward to the next 50. Now, in terms of that next 50, I don't know if you want to call it Sankofa, I don't know if you want to call it Praxis. I want to ask, though, about lessons learned from the last country strategy that influenced the direction of the current one. And we're also looking at that time frame, because the way we have AC and, well, AD and BC now, sometimes we now look at COVID as a marker. So looking at the fact that it's 2021 to 2025, is that something that also tied into what the strategy looks like as it is now? Right, so the way our strategic planning process works is that we try to align it as much as possible with the political cycle. So when a, a new administration comes into um, office, we would engage with them to determine what their priorities might be. And then we try to align the expertise and knowledge of the bank so that we can best respond and support those priorities. So um, this strategy, as you mentioned, covers the period 2021 to 2025. The previous strategy covered the period 2016 to 2020. And um, the, the strategic objectives have changed. They have evolved, of course, as have the priorities of the government post-pandemic. So just to mention what those were very quickly, the previous strategy 2016 to 2020 focused on strengthening public sector institutions and governance. Um, we had a focus on private sector development and also human capital development as well. In, in this strategic period, 2021 to 2025, we have a much narrower focus in a sense which is on digital transformation. And, and having gone through the pandemic, I'm sure you can understand why that would be a strategic focus for us and the government of Trinidad and Tobago at this time. Now, how does this tie in with medium and long-term development plans in, in the way that you focus, the way that you execute that, that, narrow, that narrow point of vision, especially as it pertains to that digital transformation? Right, so you know that the government has a long-term development strategy. It's called Vision 2030. And there was an update, if you will, to that um, as we were coming out of the pandemic called the Roadmap to Recovery. And so we have, have looked very carefully at these plans 
and we have engaged in extensive dialogue with the authorities and with other actors in the private sector and in civil society. And um, based on that, we have determined that the digital transformation priority is important cross-cutting and incredibly relevant at the moment. So um, it does align with the, the long-term strategic objectives and goals um, that have been established for Trinidad and Tobago. And it is inclusive in the sense that it extends beyond government to other actors in the private sector and in civil society as well. And looking at those levels of engagement, I want to, I want to kind of circle back to the, the first question. If someone asks you what's the main difference between the Inter-American Development Bank and another one that they can walk into just like that, what, what would you tell them? What was that main kind of distinguishing factor? Right. This is a good question. I think in the past, we would have been approached for car loans and, and mortgages by individuals in the past. And that has been because um, our mission and the work that we do has not been as well understood as perhaps it is today. Um, the, the main difference is that a commercial banking institution that does retail banking will focus on individuals and providing financial solutions for those individuals. We provide financial solutions for the country. We um, attempt to uh, provide advice, knowledge, expertise, um, grant programs, and also long-term loan financing to help countries that are members of the bank realize their economic development objectives. And so you will see us focusing on major infrastructure projects in the country like wastewater treatment plants. Um, we will work on things like trade. We will work on improving public administration. We will work in health. We will work in education. Um, and so the, the, the big ticket issues that a commercial bank, which does retail banking for individuals, will not cover and, and perhaps should not cover would, would certainly be part of a, a development institution's mandate like the Inter-American Development Bank. And so we work in our public sector window to, to help realize um, the improvement of lives through investing in development projects that benefit all citizens. Um, we do have two other windows which I can talk about a, a little bit later if you like. And we'll do that a little later, and it's a perfect point for us to take a short break. We return speaking with IDB's country rep for Trinidad and Tobago, Karina Coburn, or should we say Karina N. Coburn. Stay with us, we return after this. Welcome back. We are speaking with IDB's country rep, Karina Coburn. And just before we took the break, we were talking about forms of support, looking at financial solutions to countries. And I'm wondering, Ms. Coburn, does that take the form of suggestions as well? And I say that in terms of that support, is it saying that we see other jurisdictions doing X and it's working? So it's possibly something that you may want to consider as well, or is it a matter of just taking proposals, running it by your internal checks and balancings before deciding whether or not to lend resources? How, how, what's some of the things that go into the process? Thanks. Um, it's, it's both of those. Both of those things are involved. But really, it, it evolves from a process of dialogue. Um, we, we have within our borrowing member countries uh, a country office which is staffed with technical professionals and, and people who help to work on execution of projects. And that allows us to remain very close to our counterparts in, in government and the private sector. We have ongoing dialogue with them. We, read the newspapers every day, we live in the country, we experience the, the challenges that the citizens may face. And so um, what emerges from the ongoing dialogue and, and the research that we conduct 
are the opportunities to collaborate and partner with counterparts to implement development projects. So yes, because we work across Latin America and the Caribbean, there are lessons learned from other countries which we can apply in the local context. However, we really try not to use a one-size-fits-all approach, but to really tailor customized bespoke solutions that are appropriate for the local context. And so that emerges from dialogue. The idea may come from a stakeholder. It may come from a government department or agency. Um, it may come from us, but together we, we determine if this is a priority for financing and then we move forward to co-create and design the solution together. And I really appreciate that answer, Ms. Coburn, because sometimes it feels as though there's, there's this silver bullet that has come from somewhere or someone has come with a solution that works elsewhere, so they're breaking down on high, and you hear theme music when it's being presented. And if you don't, if you don't go this route, uh, things may not be as well for you in terms of accessing the resources. But and looking at the dialogues that you have, the experiences, creating those bespoke solutions from reports, your experience. Is there any way that IDB support has changed? And once again, we look at COVID-19 as a time marker, a time stamp. So before COVID-19 to now at this point in time, what are some of those changes? I see you nodding. Right. So, you know, as I said, we, we certainly try not to use this cookie cutter approach or to, to insist that the solutions that we recommend or propose or, or are being used in other countries of the bank should be appropriate for Trinidad and Tobago. We really want this to be customized for, for the context. And we, we, we understand that the authorities and counterparts in the country have a deeper understanding of the, the, the country and the economy and the society than we do. So it has to be a partnership. It has to be a, a collaborative process. In, in terms of how that has evolved um, post-COVID, I, I think, you know, as I mentioned, we've been in the country for over 50 years already. We, we, we have always tried to be present at, at the moments when we're needed most. I guess what you call counter-cyclical financing. So when, when it's most needed is when we try to be available and present and to mobilize the appropriate solutions. And so over time, that, that, that solution has evolved and, and those priorities have evolved. And so, um, you know, in one moment, it may have been that the investments would have been directly in oil and gas. Um, in, in a post-COVID moment, we may invest more strongly in renewable energy and energy efficiency initiatives. Um, I think the, the most significant change is the greater awareness worldwide, really, and, and also here among stakeholders in Trinidad and Tobago, that digitalization is just absolutely key in order to, to survive in the post-COVID world. And, and we must restructure and operate our economies on a, on a digital base. And so um, this, this really has been the driver of the new country strategy that was developed and, and, and launched um, right as COVID was, was coming to a close, as the pandemic was coming to a close. And, and I think there is a, a greater recognition now that this is the way to go in terms of development solutions. And, and what does that really mean? It means that we, we, we try to encourage and promote the use of technology and digital solutions in all the sectors in which we work. Um, so if we're working in the water sector, we want to, to bring to bear technology and digital solutions in how we manage the distribution of water to make that much more efficient. And, and similarly, as we talk about renewable energy, which is highly technology driven, we want to ensure that we can leverage the knowledge and expertise 
that Trinidad and Tobago has built in oil and gas and, and transition that to, to helping to deploy and add some of these renewable energy options to the, to the energy supply. And when you when you speak about leveraging knowledge is something that goes past just oil and gas. So I, I take that point and I scale it up. Looking at the conversations you have, the engagements that you're having. And with that, I want to ask you your thoughts on the importance of CSOs, other bodies, to help kind of bridge some of those gaps between government and IDB efforts. Is it that the consultation ties into the country's strategy, uh, the aim of fostering human capital development? Because Many times there's this thing, okay, this is growth, no, this is development, because it, it focuses on people a little more. So what are your thoughts on the rules of CSOs in bridging that level of engagement? You know, you, you've hit on something really important there. In fact, we, we consider it so important that it's actually built into our guidelines and procedures. Um, whenever we develop a new country strategy, we have to consult extensively with civil society. Whenever we um, co-create a new operation, a new um, long-term loan, for example, we have to consult with civil society and broader stakeholders as well. And in fact, within our country office and, and across our other um, countries as well, we convene a, a civil society group that meets with us on a monthly basis. So here in Trinidad and Tobago, that group is called the Next Gen Board. And it, it consists of people who understand digital transformation, who understand the sectors in which we work, who understand Trinidad and Tobago and can identify those gaps that you mentioned so that we can ensure that our, our solutions are, are inclusive, and take into account the needs and, and, and requirements of those who are underserved and perhaps underrepresented. So this is extremely important to us and extremely valuable in terms of enhancing the quality of the development solutions that we deploy. And definitely, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Ms. Coburn. Hopefully, it's our first conversation. Hopefully, it won't be our last. Looking at other things that IDB is doing in terms of helping to impact development finance in Trinidad and Tobago and the region. But thank you once more, Country Rep for Trinidad and Tobago, Karina Coburn. And on behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Ronstar. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.